Welcome to the second video of the Grant Writing 101 video series. My name is Joel Christensen, and I'm with the Community Development Unit of Alberta Culture, Multiculturalism, and Status of Women. Before I begin, I'd like to mention that our goal in this video series is to give you the knowledge to improve your proposal and grant writing skills and be able to apply these skills and improve your future applications. The intent for you is to walk away with at least one new tip or piece of information that will help you when thinking about developing and sustaining your community project or initiative. Also, the information presented is aimed at an introductory level or as a refresher for those who want to apply for grants and be successful in their applications. We have some related resources that we can share with you. In the description of the video, there is a link to the grant writing toolkit that provides additional links and resources that we think are helpful for you and your nonprofit organization as you're planning for your grants. Included in this toolkit is also a copy of the slide deck we used for this video. To subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notification about upcoming videos, you can also hit the subscribe button down below and turn the notification on. I'd also like to mention before we start that the information offered in this video and the related materials are not intended to constitute consulting or other professional services of any kind. We are not funders, nor do we have any authority or oversight over funding decisions. The information we are sharing with you is based on research and discussions with various funders, and we think it will be helpful to you as you complete your grant applications. By the end of part two of this Grant Writing 101 video series, you will be able to describe various steps in writing and submitting grant application and identify and explain the components of proposal design. So let's get started on Grant Writing 101 part two. In part one, you did your research and preparation, including scanning your environment, identifying a clear need and an opportunity in your community. And you have concluded that you have a good pitch to a granting organization. So now you're ready to proceed to proposal writing. The information that needs to be included in a grant proposal and the order of this information in the proposal are fairly consistent. However, the sequence that you write the information is not the same as the order of the information in the proposal. The left column on the slide outlines the basic components of the proposal. This is most likely the sequence that funders will ask for in their proposal. The right column is the writing sequence. This is about what you should do first before you go to the next part. For example, you do not start writing the introduction. The introduction is written towards the end of the writing process after you have written the main parts of the grant application. After you write these sections, you can easily just copy them into the application in the order that the funder is asking for. Of course, not all funding applications will ask for proposals in this specific order. It's just to give you a general framework of what is expected by funders and how this differs from how you write the proposal content. So now that you've got your proposal design mapped out, let's start with the problem statement and some tips on what to include in this section. The problem statement is the most important component when writing a grant proposal. The problem statement sets the stage for the rest of the grant proposal. Most people try to place the solution into the problem statement. Don't do this. The funders are often asking you to first frame what the issue or problem is not to prescribe the solution just yet. So instead, briefly explain what needs to change or why there is a need for change. Outline the challenges and opportunities. For example, include whether you have looked at internal cost savings and efficiencies as a way of funding this. Some suggested questions that you can address are these. Is this a new problem? Is this an ongoing need? Or is this a temporary opportunity or situation? Has funding flatlined or changed? Maybe government grants have been cut back or your donations have gone down because of an economic downturn or a global pandemic which has hit. Have your program or client needs increased but your funding has remained the same or decreased? Essentially in the problem statement, you want to make sure that you answer the question what community problem or issue does my project or program solve? And if you can back it up with credible statistics, do it. 
Just a note about language. You may see some of these other terms that are listed on the right-hand side of the slide. Issue statement, needs assessment, and so on. These phrases all mean the same thing as the problem statement. Funders may just choose a different language to outline it for you, but the information you need to include is essentially the same. Now we have a short question for you. Which problem statement is the most effective? ABC School needs to hire a youth outreach worker to create a mentoring program to protect its students. Over the past year, there has been a 13% increase in reported bullying behavior towards students in ABC School, and ABC School needs to hire a youth outreach worker to create a mentoring program. Over the past three years, there has been a 65% increase in bullying behavior towards students in ABC School. I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer this question. If you need more time, you can pause the video and answer the question. Okay, the correct answer is C. Over the past three years, there has been a 65% increase in bullying behavior towards students in ABC School. Let's look at why this answer is the best answer. Statement A is ABC School needs to hire a youth outreach worker to create a mentoring program to protect its students. This statement includes a couple of things for us to look at. Firstly, the hiring of a youth outreach worker and creating a mentoring program is the solution or part of a solution to the problem ABC School is experiencing. The absence of the outreach worker and mentoring program is not the problem itself. When describing the problem, it's very common error to state the solution or the method to solve the problem or what you need money for. But remember what we covered earlier, the problem statement should not include the solution. Secondly, statement A doesn't actually state what the problem is that leads to the conclusion that an outreach worker needs to be hired. A problem statement needs to contain a problem or opportunity that needs to be addressed, basically the why. Statement B is over the past year, there has been a 13% increase in reported bullying behavior towards students in ABC school and ABC school needs to hire a youth outreach worker to create a mentoring program. This version does include a statement about a problem, which is good. However, it goes on to state what the solution is. As we just talked about with statement A, the problem statement should not include the solution. The proposed solution should be presented later in the body of the proposal with evidence to back it up. Statement C is, over the past three years, there has been a 65% increase in the bullying behavior towards students in ABC school. This statement is clear and to the point. It clearly states a problem and doesn't add a proposed solution. Here are also a couple of tips. When drafting a problem statement, try to include the root cause when describing the current situation. Ask yourself, does the problem statement identify what I want to spend money on? Or does it describe the root cause of the issue that the money is intended to address? Let's move on now and look at goals. Here is a tip before you even start writing your goals. Check to see how the funder defines the term or what terminology they use. Check to see if your goals align with the funder's goals. If they don't, don't waste your time applying. For example, you are an organization that works with promoting literacy for children with developmental disabilities, and there is a grant available to fund an outdoor playground for children. You may think that this could be a great fit since your organization and the funders are working with children. However, do the goals actually align? They could, but how does promotion of literacy align with promoting outdoor play. This could be a case of clever proposal writing, but funders want to see clear alignments to their goals. So as the slide says, goals are generally outcome-based statements that describe what results the organization wants to accomplish, and they are about focusing our resources, energies, efforts, and time. You can call the funder to check and see if they align. When you contact them, be passionate but not argumentative in your conversation. Don't work to convince them that you're a fit if they are convinced you're not. 
this isn't the way to build a good relationship and it's also a waste of your time. Funders want to make the best use of their time and yours as well. A funder may have other ideas for you too on ways to support the project or program, like another grant that could be a better fit or other resources like volunteer pools and such. Go back to your organization description and your problem statement again to confirm your project or program fits the grant and clarify your thinking and writing. Do you remember the ABC school example? The problem statement was over the past three years, there has been a 65% increase in bullying behavior towards students in ABC school. What was their evidence? Well, they looked at a number of reported in incidents of bullying behavior over a period of time. A goal they are aiming for is a safe and caring school free from bullying behavior. Now let's look at the objectives section of the grant proposal. Think of this work as a map. The problem statement or the need or an opportunity is where you currently are. The goal, what we just covered, is where you want to get to. Objectives are how you move from the problem to the goal. Let's look at how your specific objectives should be so that they are interesting to the funders. Specific. Your objectives should be well-defined, clear, and unambiguous. They should be clear to anyone that has basic knowledge of the situation and the organization. The next one is measurable. They want to know if the objective can be achieved and how far away from the completion it is. They want the specific criteria that measures your progress and shows that you have progressed in reaching your objectives. They also want to know when you will achieve your objectives. The objectives should also be agreed upon or attainable or achievable. There should be agreement with all the stakeholders what the goal should be, and they should also be achievable. They should be reasonable, acceptable, and action-oriented. The next one is realistic or relevant. You should think about whether your objective follows within the availability of resources, knowledge, and time. Is it realistic? And the last but not least is time-based or timely. You should consider enough time to achieve the goals, not too soon or too late. The timing should be realistic and you should also be able to track the timing. So as you see, your objectives should be SMART. An objective that meets the SMART criteria will help focus your efforts and increase your chances in achieving it. So here is a SMART objective from the ABC school scenario. The objective is a decrease in bullying incidents against students by 30% each year. As you see, it is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. It is a good and realistic goal. Okay, now another question for you. Your proposal will nearly always include both broad goals and measurable objectives. Pick out the measurable objective from the list below. Design, print, and distribute brochures explaining self-defense techniques for women. Save the rainforest in South America. Increase awareness of HIV AIDS prevention techniques. Immunize 2,000 children against measles over the next quarter period. Which one is the correct answer? Go through the SMART analysis. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer the question. If you need more time, you can pause the video and have more time to answer the question. The answer is D. This answer has a clear goal and is measurable. It is realistic and attainable, and it is timely too. Okay, let's move on now and look at results and outcomes. As you can see from this slide, outcomes are a product or result that occurs when goals and objectives are achieved. They describe the benefit or change for an individual during or after they participate in a program and service. For example, a change in skill or knowledge, a change in attitude or behavior, 
or in the status or condition of the participants. Funders often ask for outcomes, so they are something to think about in terms of how you can measure your performance. In some cases, funders will indicate what outcomes they want to be measured, but even if they don't, it's still a good idea to identify what outcomes or results you're trying to achieve and what you will measure. If nothing else, it will help you be better define the scope of the work and ensure that you are including the resources that are needed for the evaluation components of the proposal as well. We're going to talk about evaluation in a few slides. By developing your own outcomes, you can clearly explain how your outcomes align with those of the funders, if they do align. And here's a tip. A useful tip to put the program participant as the doer. For example, going back to the ABC school scenario, a potential outcome could be, students feel safe and cared for in school. As you see, the students are the doers and the focus of this outcome. And this example demonstrates an outcome in the status or condition of the participants. They will now feel safe. Here's an example. In the grant proposal application, you will also want to describe the various project activities that will take place. You will need to demonstrate how these activities will help you achieve your desired results or outcomes. For example, you want to describe the activities or tasks that, that will be carried out to ultimately meet your goals, the reasons why you're carrying out these activities, and how the activities align with your intended outcomes. So an example of the activities that ABC School can do is this, hiring a youth outreach worker to create a stop bullying mentoring program. The rationale being that educating students will minimize bullying behavior. Okay, so let's talk about evaluation. An evaluation plan is an important part of a grant proposal that provides information to improve a project during development and implementation. Having a robust evaluation plan will help make your project or program better. Before you design your evaluation, first verify that the grant application you're working on requires it. Not all grant proposals require an evaluation plan. Essentially, evaluation is a component in the grant proposal because it tells the funders how you're going to determine the success or failure of the program, and it confirms whether or not you did what you set out to do. Evaluations can help you accomplish various purposes. To understand your assumptions and hypothesis was right, did you do what you set out to do? To determine the methods specified were used and if the objectives were met? To find out if you made an impact on the identified need of the community? To get feedback from the people that were served or members of the community? and to maintain control over the project. Evaluations often take place at various points in the project, which allows for corrections to be made if needed. In your toolkit, you have a resource called how to write the evaluation section of your grant proposal. That will help you with writing the evaluation section of your proposal. A potential evaluation for the ABC school grant application scenario could be Survey students to get feedback on the effectiveness of the Stop Bullying Mentoring Program in preventing bullying. You could also gather data and compare statistics on the number of bullying incidents before the Stop Bullying Mentoring Program is actually implemented, and then again at three, six, and nine month intervals after the start of the program. So in summary, at this point, you have one, included the problem statement, and provided evidence to support it. You've provided a goal or outcome statement. You have identified SMART objectives, and you have identified some desired results and outcomes. You have offered a proposed solution and theory of change to support it, and you may have even included the evaluation criteria. If you're looking for a review checklist, we have a checklist in the toolkit, which was created by the Grantsmanship Center. So in summary, when writing your own grant proposals, you will want to include the problem statement and provide evidence to support it, provide a goal and outcome statement, identify smart objectives, 
propose a solution and theory of change to support it, and the evaluation criteria. There is also a review checklist in the toolkit, which was created by the Grantsmanship Center. The checklist will be helpful for you to know what sections you need to have in your proposals. This brings us to the end of the second video on Grant Writing 101. Thank you for watching. Our contact information is on the slide and they are in the toolkit as well. If you are in Alberta and you have a question, you need further information or would like to request our services, you can contact us through email and phone. You can also contact the Community Grants Unit about various grants for not-for-profit organizations from the Government of Alberta. You can also access our website to know more about our resources and services. And also, if you want to be informed of our future services and resources, you could add your email to our subscription form and you will receive information about our services and resources as they become available. The link to the subscription form is in the description of the video as well. Thank you for your attention. Take care, stay healthy, and always remember that our communities have so much more because of everything you do. Thank you all and bye for now.